Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering five skincare myths. Stuff I hear all the time or read on the interwebs and I'm just like, no, no. So let's clarify some things. Myth number one, steam is good for opening up pores. That is false. Here's, here's the thing. Pores are not doors. They do not open and close. Steaming the face or, fa or the steam from your shower, it actually can irritate your skin a, a lot. When you steam the skin, you're basically just exposing it to water. That water then condenses onto the surface of the skin and then evaporates out and can dry out your skin and lead to irritation. So the trend of steaming, I have a video on why facial steaming is not, not a great idea, but the, the idea that you need to steam to open your pores and clean them out, bogus, 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 bogus. You know, there are a few situations few skin conditions and issues for which steam actually can be helpful. Things where you have a lot of crusty buildup can benefit from either a compress to soak them, to get them super saturated with water, make it easier to debride and slough off. But for the average person out there, this is not helpful or necessary. And the facial steamer thing, yeah, it's not something that, that I recommend, especially if you use things like uh, topical retinoids or salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, acne medications, uh, the, the steaming thing can make those ingredients a heck of a lot more irritating and problematic and cause issues for, for you. So I, yeah, steaming, no. And, and just, you know, anytime people are talking about this will open up your pores, no. Myth number two is surrounding jar packaging. Always get questions about this. Is it safe to use moisturizers that are in jars? Because isn't there a risk that we're gonna contaminate them by putting our finger in there? No, they have preservatives in them that are biocides that kill off any potential pathogenic bacteria. Things like parabens help to prevent that. So no, you don't have to worry about jar packaging. Moisturizers are more than fine in jar packaging. I don't know why why people would think otherwise, and I you know I think it's kind of an agenda against drugstore stuff in favor of selling you more expensive stuff and those godforsaken little dropper bottles. I can't with those. Yeah, I mean nothing against those. I have several skincare products that are in dropper bottles, but it's like, yeah, I mean jars are fine. Jars are fine. Myth number three, your skin gets used to certain ingredients. False, that is false. Uh, I hear this all the time. Do I need to switch up my skincare products because my skin is gonna get used to using particular moisturizer? No, not at all. The only reason to ch change up your skincare products is because as the seasons change or as you change with age, uh, you know, sometimes your skin maybe needs a heavier moisturizer or a more lightweight moisturizer. Maybe you would benefit from some acne control using an, a product with acne, active ingredients against acne. But no, it's not because your skin gets used to it. Here's the thing, your epidermis, the top layer of your skin where all these products are going and whatnot, it turns over every, roughly every 20, 28 days. Uh, it turns over faster in babies, and as we get older, it takes a little bit longer, but it turns over. So this idea that your skin gets used to it, it's like every 20, 20 28 days, there's new, there are different skin cells seeing the product, so nobody's getting used to anything. There is one, in, one set of ingredients that the skin can become uh, get used to. This is a phenomenon known as tachyphylaxis. And tachyphylaxis is something that I was always taught was specific to topical steroids. I have observed it a few times, but here's the thing. Another dermatologist actually debunked kind of the phenomenon of tachyphylaxis or looked into it more in, in a, a, a different light and show that really a lot of times we think the steroids are no longer working, but the truth is that patient stops using them. Uh, he actually did this by looking at things like a uh, refill pattern on the prescription steroids, and he had like, um, he had like some kind of device where he could measure how many times a patient opened the bottle and whatnot. So he actually showed that in a lot of cases, it's not so much that the steroid stops working, it's uh, patients stop using the ingredient or they stop using it 
uh, as they're supposed to. Um, and really what that showed us as dermatologists is that a lot of times we might think the steroid's not working, but we need to revisit with the patient if they're actually using it, go over how to use it and whatnot. So e even, even that one exception seems to not even be as big of a deal as maybe we think it is. Um, but long story short, no, your skin does not get used to ingredients. And then the other topical ingredient that I guess you could make an argument for this, it's not the skin getting used to it, um, but the bacteria getting used to it is topical antibiotics, clindamycin, uh, erythromycin, these are antibiotics that kill bacteria. And there is a risk with long-term use of topical antibiotics that the bacteria on your skin uh, become resistant to them, like a, become like superbugs, so to speak, no longer respond to the killing effect of these antibiotics. That is a risk with long-term use of topical antibiotics but that's the bacteria, it's not your skin. Myth number four, moisturizers are going to make your skin lazy and no longer produce its own natural moisturizing factors. No, that is false. I don't know where this came from, why people say this. I have another video kind of talking about it more in depth, but it's absolutely a myth. As we get more mature or with certain skin issues or skin conditions, the skin is prone, more, becomes more prone to losing water. The skin barrier is not as tight, so to speak. Um, if we're using ingredients or products that irritate our skin, that can compromise the skin barrier and make us more likely to have dry, dry skin that's prone to, to even more irritation. Moisturizers help this. They help clue our skin into making its own natural moisturizing factors. Again, things like urea, ceramides, these are moisturizing ingredients that kind of can help your skin biology wake up and, and do what it's supposed to do again. Moisturizers also have ingredients that help seal in water into the skin and keep it hydrated. But your skin is not gonna become lazy from using moisturizers. I mean, like, again, you have a different set of skin cells looking at these ingredients every 28 days, roughly. So yeah, I mean, the idea that your skin will become lazy, it just doesn't make sense. And there's zero evidence to support this claim. And yeah, I mean, as we mature, our skin naturally stops making as much um, in terms of moisturizing factors and whatnot. And using a moisturizer is helpful. Using a moisturizer is not a cure for that. So yeah, when you stop using the moisturizer, your skin will get dry again, but like, it's not like it's not like your skin got lazy from using the moisturizer. That is a complete myth. Myth number five and the final myth. Medical grade is the only skincare that is worth it and that can actually work. Whoo, that is a huge myth. Let me tell you guys this. Medical grade is a type of marketing. It's a type of marketing of really expensive skincare products, priced to be expensive, not because of what they contain necessarily, but because of how they are going to be marketed. They're going to be marketed to a active audience seeking skincare advice from a professional, AKA a dermatologist. So a dermatologist is akin to an influencer in the realm of medical grade skincare. And so it's not as though the products are any different. And a lot of products that are quote, medical grade skincare, <clears throat> They are owned by companies that have the same type of products in the drugstore, like L'Oreal, for example. SkinCeuticals, super expensive, uh, but L'Oreal also is La Roche-Posay and CeraVe. And so if you go into the drugstore, you can find the majority of these products with these ingredients in them for a fraction of the price. They're just not being sold to you by a professional, uh, your dermatologist or an esthetician, for example. I mean, that's a pretty bold claim if you think about it because medical grade skincare, or just like drugstore skincare, is a cosmeceutical. So it's not under any kind of regulatory oversight as far as demonstrating efficacy. There, it's not as though there are head-to-head -head trials that compare a medical grade moisturizer to a drugstore moisturizer. Yeah, this is all marketing. I mean, there was a study that actually showed that consumers were more likely to buy products 
that were labeled or dermatologists recommended and that with those those that labeling with that marketing the there was a corresponding increase in the price point in comparison to products that didn't have that marketing and people were more likely to buy it that being said i do put a lot of stock in bigger companies that have a large a large research and development uh, department team whatever you want to call it and actually present their studies at Durham meetings. I do tend to have more confidence in those brands because they're actually showing their data in, at meetings and things. I mean, I take the data with a grain of salt because it is an industry study, but I do tend to have more confidence in them because I know they have large uh, research and development teams and they put a lot of effort into R&D and I especially have more confidence in bigger companies that have been doing skincare for a long 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 time uh, you know and you know have more of a track record but not all of these companies that I'm talking about are medical grade uh, Johnson & Johnson, L'Oreal, uh, Galderma you know, they, they all have their hands in the drugstore market. And so I have a lot of confidence in these brands, more so over just kind of fly-by-night indie brands that I'm not so sure do diligence by their ingredients like these larger corporations do that have big teams of scientists that spend all day uh, looking at these ingredients. So that's kind of I guess where I would draw the line with saying medical grade skincare is no different. Um, it's not that you have to go for the medical grade marketing, but yeah, I do believe there is a difference in the quality of ingredients from different brands. And But it doesn't mean that you have to pay top dollar for that quality. Those, those brands that are doing the diligence by the ingredients, they're available in the drugstore. Yeah, those are five myths that I hear a lot, but comment below on if there are any more myths that you guys would like me to bust or talk about. Um, I, you know, I, I hear a lot more, but these are the, the five that just came to my mind this morning and I thought I would chit chat with you guys about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.